Hey everyone, welcome back. Well, in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about the Azure Kubernetes storage. Well, uh, we are going with the lab series and while I was creating the lab for the Azure uh, storage regarding Azure disk, static and dynamic, those kind of st stuff, then I, I realized I have not uh, created the AKS storage uh, concept videos even in my Azure Kubernetes series. So that's why I'm just giving a pause for a few videos until I complete the concept of uh, storage in AKS. And I'm placing these videos in the AKS uh, playlist. Uh, wouldn't take much, maybe two or maybe three videos, nothing much. So let's get started. So if we talk about uh, storage in concept of, uh, in, in generalized concept, there could be two kind of, there could be two kinds of uh, storage, a persistent one and a non-persistent one. Uh, what it means, as the name says, storage is there. Uh, it will persist even if the, the application or the resource like pod is using it or even uh, not using it, the data is still there. Do not get confused with this. Uh, you will understand once I'm through with all these few videos that I'm focusing on for Azure uh, Kubernetes uh, storage. So in order to understand those things, uh, I'll try to summarize in the end. But for now, let's try to focus on um, the four concepts of storage in Azure. There is volume, there is persistent volume, there is storage classes, and there is persistent volume claims. These four concepts so we need to understand each concept and then try to uh, summarize it so in this particular video we'll be covering the volumes because it's little not little it's it's complicated when you go into it you'll, you'll find because the terms are very similar i'll try to uh, unfold it uh, for you so let's get started so volumes uh, if I need to, uh, let's put it this way. Pods are ephemeral or disposal for, or, or, or Kubernetes typically treats individual pods as ephemeral or disposal. It can be irrepressible or it can, uh, one may be crashed, may be lost, another one gets created, right? So it's ephemeral or disposal. And volume provides storage for the containers inside the pod. We do know there is there is a there is a pod and inside the pod there could be more than one container. Usually it's one, but maybe more than one. So who is utilizing the uh, uh, volume? It's the container, and pod uh, is there to provide the volume to the container. Or if I have to say, it would be more like just stay with me. You would understand. Even if any container restarts or fails, this would not affect the data stored on the volumes. However, this volume created at the time of pod creation uh, deletes once pod is deleted. So in other words, volume lives as per the lifespan of pod. So volume can live the container restart, but if pod restarts, volume is gone. So the volume is residing in context of the pod. So what I'm trying to say. So this, this, this part is clear. Volume can live the container restart, but if pod restarts, volume is gone. Okay. So <clears throat> pod creates volume. Container uses those volumes through volume mounts, right? You got to mount the volume to the containers. So volume is created that I was saying in, when I mentioned the manifest file. Volume is created uh, in context of the pod and that volume is mounted on the container which is inside the pod. So if container restarts, it would again mounted the same volume because it is there. It is in the context of the pod, okay? Now let's check the volume types. So there, there are two Azure disk and Azure files that, that can be created as volume. And 
this is uh, as the name says particularly because uh, of azure cloud so these are the features of aks not the kubernetes uh, what i mean to say if you are deploying kubernetes on your on-premises but kubernetes also has uh, its own like empty dir secret and config map as a volume types so in in total you got like five uh, you can you can use azure disk azure file empty dir secret and config maps so <clears throat> let's talk about the azure resources first so uh, what do you need to do you you can create disk manually as your disk i'm talking about it could be standard and premium you know ssds and hdds you can you, you can create the disk manually and provide uri of the disk during pod creation in volume this is more uh more of a single pod and in case of many pods accessing the same volume we have this azure file right the same concept uh, of azure right for a single machine we got disk if multiple using we need azure file as a file share so how we use azure file share well we create the storage account first and then create the file share and use the access key of the storage account as as a, as, a, as a secret injected in the pod pods not pod parts who are going to use the this uh, file share uh, but volume will get deleted if pod get get deletes you know get deleted so do not get confused by storage and volume volume is more like a kubernetes resource so what i mean what i mean by that because if pod deletes volume gets deleted not the data data is still there in the azure disk or on the azure file share but if another pod if Kubernetes creates the another pod uh, because the first one crashed, it wouldn't have the same volume attached to it because that volume is gone with the first pod. Okay, you may have the data on the Azure disk. You can uh, go ahead and again get the information uh, and create it. That's a different process, but it would not be you know automatic like. Like a, like a persistent volume that will come uh, that will come later on so volume will get deleted if pod get get deletes so you may have data available in the file and disk but aks volume is deleted as a, as as a kubernetes resource uh, okay that i tried to explain so let's see the let's see the other three that we talked about empty dir secret and uh, uh, config map. So, what is empty dir? Empty dir commonly used as a temporary space uh, for a pod. All containers within a pod can access the data on the volume. Data return on this volume type persists only for the lifespan of the pod. So, if you are if you are with me, if you are following what I'm saying, all the volumes that we talked about is staying as per the lifespan of the pod. You know what I mean? So this is more or less like a, a non-persistent uh, resource because data may be there, not in case of the empty data or secret, but it is there in case of Azure data and the, and, and the files, right? <clears throat> so once you delete the pod, pod, the volume is deleted. This volume typically uses the underlying local node disk storage, though it can also exist only in the not, not nodes memory. And what is secret? Secret is another type. Uh, you can use secret uh, volumes to inject sensitive data into the pods, such as passwords or access keys. And remember, I mentioned it uh, for the Azure files. We created the storage account and, and inject the access keys of that storage account to, to connect the pods to the Azure file share. Right, so we create secret using Kubernetes API and, and secret only provided uh, to nodes with a scheduled pod. What I mean by that, there would not be any secret on the nodes. It is only and only available when, whenever pod needs it. So if the if the last pod which needs secret is gone, then even node wouldn't have the secret because secret is stored in TM temp FS, not returned to the disk or temporary file store, not returned to the disk. 
secrets are stored in a given namespace and can only be accessed by pods within the same namespace and same thing happens with the config map but config map is not everything is all the attributes are the same but it's not secret it stores the application configuration information in in the key value format and you can inject it just like secret so it's another type and uh, just ju just like uh, using a secret config map config map also uses uh, kubernetes api or we use kubernetes api to create the config map and uh, <clears throat> Config maps are stored within a namespace and can only be accessed by ports within the same namespace. So this is what I was trying to explain. So this is all about uh, theory that I just talked about. Let me try to explain it on the on the on the diagram if that make more sense to you. This will summarize what I was talking about. So let me quickly share my screen. The shape first. So what are we trying to understand here is Azure AKS storage. As, as I mentioned at the beginning, there are like four concepts for Azure AKS storage. Here and here. So what are the four concepts that I mentioned? Volumes persistent volume storage classes persist persistent volume claims so there these are the four concepts and uh, <clears throat> These are the four concepts which takes care of all the storage that we use in the Azure Kubernetes uh, service. Okay. So we are starting with the volume. Okay. So we need we need to understand volume as a Kubernetes resource, not as a volume volume like we talk in general so there is a storage there is a data and there is a volume this volume is all about kubernetes okay so if volume goes it's the kubernetes resource which which is deleted or removed or gone not the data if we are using uh, you know azure disk or azure files it is data is still there but the volume as a Kubernetes resource has gone. Okay, now there are two kinds of volume that Kubernetes provides, which is Azure files, and there, there is easy disks. Okay. Azure files we use when multiple writes is happening. You know, multiple ports has the access because this SMB share, right? <clears throat> now, apart from these two, there are few more. Uh, I could put, I should put it here. Three more types, which is empty there. secret and config map okay and we, i already explained the empty door is it's a temporary space for the pod and all containers within a pod can access the data on the volume when the volume type is empty door and data returned to this volume type persist only for the lifespan of pod once you delete the pod the volume is deleted secret you can use secret volume to inject sensitive data into the pod such as passwords or uh, access key that we did uh, mentioned 
we create secret using Kubernetes API and it is namespace specific. It is not present on the node. It is only present on the node if pod which requires secret is running that twin temporary file share file system, not on the disk. Same goes for, with the config mag. It is exactly like secret, but it is uh, in attributes, but it is not secret. It is the uh, data which is used by application or, or application configuration information in the form of key value pairs. It is also uh, namespace specific. <clears throat> okay, so I hope the volume part is clear. There are a few things uh, I just need to show you, and I think I'll, I'll, uh, it would be better if I'll show you in the lab where I'll give the reference of this video and you would make all the sense. You will able to connect the dots. Well, thank you for watching and let's meet in another video and cover all rest of the three concepts. Till then, take care, goodbye.